It's time for Windows Weekly, our last, I guess, our Thanksgiving edition. That's probably the best way to describe it. I'm grateful for Paul and Mary Jo, and they're here. We'll talk about why Microsoft's Surface Book 2 isn't as good for gaming as you might have thought. New features in Windows 10, and um, we'll debate a little bit over Windows 10S and whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, plus some great picks of the week. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at c a c h e f l y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 545, recorded Wednesday, November 22nd, 2017. Those aren't pillows. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Captera. Find software solutions for your business needs. Captera is a free website with over 500 categories of business software and hundreds of thousands of ratings and reviews from software users just like you. Visit captera.com slash windows. And by... Tracker, a coin-sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com slash windows to save 20% off any order. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yeah, the show where we cover the latest news <laughs> from Mikey Soft. And the Mikey Soft twins are here. Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. A ZDNet blog. Soon to be part of the great Mashable network. Oh no, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> no, they're not even. Not, they're not coming to us. That's a different part of Zip. That what? They're going to. That's a different yeah. part. Well, that's yeah. really confusing. It is. And I worked for. I Ziff like Davis that there are multiple things called Zip Davis. Davis. Ziff I know. Davis. I worked for them for ten years. So they're going to the Efax J two part of Zip Davis. Right, the part that PC Mag is with. <laughs> and yeah. you're oh, with boy. the online part of Zip Davis, which used to which be. Is CBS Interactive, is it still? Still is, Okay. Yep. Wow. Yeah, Paul just, Therat, who is, do you work for these days? <laughs> I can't even keep the time zone thing straight, so uh, I, I'm not sure what to say. Crazy. He's from Therat. The time com. change, I guess. T-H-U-R-R-O-Double-Good.com. And we are gathered together, as we do each Wednesday, to inspect, dissect, and reflect. <laughs> I like to sect. You like to sect? Just throw it out on a cold table and pick it apart. <laughs> <laughs> but let's lay it out in the slab. <laughs> yeah. um, according to my notes, this is episode 545, mm -hmm. which means... Do I have a different number? No. <laughs> oh, good. Nope, you got it right. <laughs> We're counting from one on this show. Uh, Surface Gate 2, the gaming is... <laughs> <laughs> is of course I'm running a, out of words. That's a Paul Thorat uh, <laughs> special. Yeah. yeah. What's going on with the Surface Book Two, the new Surface Book? So it doesn't seem to be I an ideal actually, gaming uh, platform. Yeah. So you know, previous Surface Books, they've always kind of pushed the performance of the device. The the very first version, remember, came with an unnamed NVIDIA GeForce GPU of some kind. I think it was basically a a 940M or something like that, really, but it you know it wasn't called that. Um, and then they came out with the Surface Book with performance base, and this time they were really pushing the performance, obviously. And that had a, an improved GPU, but it was still like a NVIDIA GeForce maybe 960 something, something along those lines. Um, basically, good for sub 1080p gaming at you know medium to low quality levels across the board, that kind of thing. So one of the more interesting aspects to Surface Book 2, which is very, very much like its predecessors, is that both models, the 13.5-inch and the 15-inch, ship with what I would call gaming PC-class graphics in the form of uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX, I believe 1050 on the 13.5 and 1060 on the 15, and uh, with lots of memory, too. I think the one on the 15-inch has, I believe, 6 gigs or maybe 8 gigs of uh, dedicated RAM. So uh, these are legitimately gaming PCs, right? The portable gaming PCs. And, and that is very interesting because they've talked about that stuff a lot in the past. But this time now, I think they've finally gotten it. Um, I don't have a 15-inch version to verify this, but apparently 
the 15 inch version, when you run it at full, you know, that you, you tune the uh, power settings up to full performance and then play actual games like destiny two, um, <laughs> won't retain a charge while it's plugged in. Um, which is <laughs> hilarious, <laughs> you know, when you think about it. So obviously something's wrong. Um, the something that's wrong is that Microsoft didn't give it a bigger power supply. Right. And why, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I can't reach it easily from here, but but a real gaming PC laptop power supply is about this big. It's it's humongous. Um, the one that Surface, you know, lap, or books ships with is, is, is very small. Um, <laughs> so uh, some reviewers noticed this, um, commented on it. Microsoft finally came back. And, and the joke here, sort of, is that this was, in fact, by design oh, <laughs> that uh, um, they did this. Not only was this not a surprise to them, they implemented it this way on purpose. And according to the statement from Microsoft, what's going to happen is that it will drain the battery for, for some amount of time. And then eventually what will happen is it, the power system inside the inside of Windows 10 will revert itself to using a less full performance mode. And then the, device will start charging again but in other words don't game, game with it well yeah that's kind <laughs> of weird it's yeah i mean that will degrade the performance of the game so I, we're right in the middle of this i my guess is well, my recommendation would be at the very least for microsoft to make a bigger power supply that provides more power at least as an optional add-on for those people that, you know, actually want a game with this thing because it is hardware-wise capable of handling it. Um, and I've done some initial tests. I have, the you know, the lower-end version with the 1050 uh, and the 13.5-inch version um, is pretty fantastic, actually. It's 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 kind of nice to have a machine that's not a gigantic, big, bulky gaming rig that you can carry around with you. It does all the productivity stuff. Great keyboard and trackpad. Beautiful screen. Hopefully holds a charge. I haven't tested that yet, but, but I mean, this is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, they've they've done it again. <laughs> is it a conscious design decision? You think they say that's, it is? Yeah, they that's claim the implication. It's a feature, not a bug, right? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's just strange. I know. Neither of us got. Well, Paul got the 13-inch Surface yeah. Book to. Surface Book 2 to test. I did not get any Surface Book 2s to test this time. And you know what? I'm okay with that. You're happy yeah, with Yeah, and, and as much as it would please me to see you playing Gears of War 4 at full resolution <laughs> and all these things, it's probably right. not going to happen anyway. So The 15 no. would and be a good gaming machine, though. And I think it yeah, was getting they good wanted reviews. It. Yeah, that's, when they showed it to us, they said one of the reasons we built yeah. this was so people could use this as their yes, gaming rig. Explicitly. Mm. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. It, it like I said, it's it is literally capable. I, it, there's some before we knew about this. I mean, you might have made some minor complaints. It don't you know, 16 gigs of RAM is the maximum you can throw in this thing for some reason. Um, it does have a USB C port, but not Thunderbolt three, and it's like eh, okay. But you know, <laughs> it's like uh, Microsoft, you know, seizing <laughs> defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, Do you think that's it's a limitation? Just such a sad theme. Maybe a limitation of the Surface connector. That maybe they I, can't make it more powerful or something? That's an interesting... So I, I need to go and look and see what these things are all rated at. So, for example, maybe if you plugged it in via the Surface Dock, which uh, uses Surface Can, maybe that provides enough power to allow this to happen. I mean, it's a Surface Connect is USB-based. Um, mm -hmm. it, so there might be limitations on the amount of wattage yeah. you can thrust in. That could it. be, that could be. And I bet the dock is better because the dock th it has to support, uh, you know, USB yes. connected stuff. Yeah. That's right. Power right. stuff. Right. Yeah, it must they didn't, be. You know, right. They, they also didn't that, make a lot concerned. of Surface Book 15 inch uh, machines. It's only right. available in the U.S. in very limited quantities. So this is one of those things. I bet the second batch of them that they make, they'll fix this. Yeah. Well, speaking of things they could fix, the other oddity to this device is that it ships with the creators update and not the fall creators update that um, has been out for over a month now and was finalized almost two months ago, <laughs> you know, which is a little strange when it's coming from the platform maker. It'd be like Google shipping yeah. a Pixel 2 with Android 7.11 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a little strange. It updates well, right away, though, right? Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. I think, um, 
it's not that weird if if you think of them being an OEM for their own device because those new HP laptops that we're both testing um, that also shipped with the anniversary update, I believe. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that could be. I, I mean, don't not anniversary update. Head, but, I mean, uh, sorry. Yeah, um, the, creators update. The creators update. Not, but yep. not the fall yep. creators that could be. update. Yep. Yeah. So I think there the is some what of a lag time between the two things. And it won't stay this way, right? I mean, these things right. are dynamically created at the factory. They can, the image will ship with 1709. It will happen seamlessly. Yeah. Um, it's not a huge concern. It's just, it's just kind of an oddity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary Jo, you're, uh, you're, it looks like you're in uh, Rhode Island. Yes, I am. How did you know that? I just had that feeling. <laughs> Can you move your um, the headset mic that you don't you don't normally use further it? away? It's, it's breathing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Better. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. Stop breathing. Would ya? Come on. I'm in um, I'm in Wickford. Wickford. Rhode Love Wickford. Wickford, Wickford is yeah. a great great area there. Yeah, yeah. just a hop, skip, and a jump for my ma'am. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Um, yeah, you know, the other thing they could do if they really cared, and this is only the 15 inches, right? Mm -hmm. so it's I a believe small so. I'm going to test this on the 13 I have yet. They could, if it's possible on the Surface Connector to throw more wattage, they could just send everybody a new power brick, right? Yeah, that's an expensive fix for a problem yeah. they're going to pretend doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> you know buy I mean? the thing that they, oh, um, this is how we intended it. That makes no sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I, no I actually, sense. I like you your don't ship a power because... brick that can't keep the laptop charged when right. it's in use. That doesn't make any sense. I've never seen a laptop do that. Have you? Mm. No. No. <laughs> no. That's what I mean. This is. But this is, I this is like a I new, just... this is what happens when you're a new to the business. Yep. I guess yeah. this is their, you know, this is only their second surface book. I know. You could almost picture they discovered this at the last second and they were like, hey, um, you know, we were playing video games last night and we noticed the battery was down to 50%, even though we were had it plugged in and they were like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel bad because they're in the midst of trying to recover from the, from the whole consumer reports doesn't like surface debacle yeah, yeah, yeah. and then this happens so yeah i mean speaking about this kind of generally I, I i wrote something about trusting whether you can trust surface you know today um i mean i look uh, seriously compared to companies like apple or google I, I, microsoft in general i trust explicitly i mean i i think they are the more trustworthy company and that they they intend to do the right thing i don't i don't see malicious intent anywhere there um, this kind of thing is disappointing because like Mary Jo said, the whole reliability issue, and it's tough because even though we don't have the data yet, I, I feel anecdotally, because I do get a lot of feedback from people, right? Who write me in about whatever problem they have with whatever device that the 2017 surface devices, surface laptop, the new surface pro and now surface book two, although that one just came out, um, are not the subject of a lot of complaints. You know, mm. Surface Book and Surface Pro 4, when they first came out, was yeah. endemic, you know, and it was a yeah. problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it is fair to say, and Microsoft says this, that uh, the reliability of those two products improved over time, mm -hmm. because they did. Um, it, it's early, you know, to say with the 2017 devices, but I, I really do feel, my opinion is that they have gotten ahead of this, you know? And so this kind of thing is like, guys, seriously, like, like it, it's it's tough because these are, you know, they're great devices by and large and uh, they're beautiful to look at and, and they're interesting on a number of levels and my God, it doesn't hold a charge when it's plugged in. Are you serious? <laughs> like, that's crazy. I know. Uh, it's crazy. I know. It's a 102 yeah. watt uh, charger. The Surface Book 2 one is. Yeah. Right. So, all right. Well, while we have busy bees working for us out on the internet, maybe someone could figure out what the Surface uh, dock is. Mm. And I wonder if, because if that's the ceiling for Surface Connect, that might be, that could be it. I like that theory because that sort of <laughs> gives the technical truth to what their statement said, which is it was a design decision. In other words, confronted by the fact that yeah. We can't fix this problem unless we move past USB slash Surface Connect. We decided to go ahead with what we had, and and Surface Book Three will have a Thunderbolt connector, and this will be a thing, you know, a problem from the past. Um, part of me, I mean, I, I, that sounds plausible uh, that that was the decision. Yeah, it was a mm -hmm. design decision before we made this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep with this connector port, so 
it has limitations. There's no doubt about it. You can't drive two 4K displays at 60 frames a second. That's a huge issue for some people. And frankly, I think you can make a case for the typical Surface Book 2 customer, especially someone who's handing you three thousand dollars plus for a 15 inch version. Uh, it should do that kind of thing. You know that it's a portable workstation. It should it should make you know meet the needs of that market. It looks like this the dock is actually less. <laughs> the dock is ninety. The dock is ninety watts. That, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, so yeah. that thing probably couldn't power Surface Book Two on a good yeah. day, let alone with gaming. Yeah, so um, that's interesting. That that, that is, is interesting. Uh, they, they, yeah, I they, assumed it would be more or the same. They underestimated the uh, the draw, I guess. But you can, mm. you know, you can calculate that. I mean, you don't have to test it. Yeah, mm. it's like it's a math problem or something, and maybe. Some of those computer sciencey types over at Microsoft could have done a little back of the napkin thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, this is so crazy that it is pretty crazy. I, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, try, I'm trying to see if they <laughs> offer anything uh, bigger, but I think they ac it actually ships. Well, Microsoft the won't. Form. But uh, so the question is, see, there's no way to look this up. The, no one uses USB based power. Uh, you know, uh, Thunderbolt obviously a USB C. Well, uh, actually, there are some USB-C based devices. Um, yeah, because USB-C has a charging spec. That's yeah, separate yeah, yeah, from yeah. the you know USB yep. voltage spec. Mm. Yep. Hmm. Hum. I wonder. I'm. I'm thinking. There, that may be the theoretical limit of the Surface Connector. That's what I'm. That's. Mm. Yeah. That's a very good theory. It's my yeah. theory. Hmm. Because this is bigger than this is the biggest. Uh, now somebody's saying 120 watts is the max the Surface Connect port can handle. Interesting. And that what was this one? 109. Yeah, 102. 102. So there's room for. It is more. the biggest brick uh, that they've had on a portable Surface device for sure. Um, the one that comes with the 13 inch version is pretty big too. I assume it's not the same. I don't. Maybe I shouldn't assume that, but um, <laughs> I will look at that. I guess. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. just do, do any of your other, you know, hosts have these kinds of, uh, no, no, no other. Yeah, well, no. Yeah. you know, incre Google's increasingly looking like this. Actually, yeah. Apple has its own quirks. No, I think this is pretty normal. <laughs> Actually, come yeah, to think of do. it. Yeah. I've never seen a laptop ship with a power supply that can't keep it running. Yeah, so yeah. And, and people that's say unusual. Microsoft isn't innovative, and there you yeah. go. <laughs> that's unusual. Uh, I bet it's happened, but it, that's that's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow, it's just, yeah. Uh, I know. Priceless. Yeah. Uh, you know, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, I will say the new HP Spectre that I'm testing, the mm -hmm. brand new yeah, one. Did you get the skinny is, one, the thin one? Yeah, the white one with the gold. Ooh, that one looks so yeah, nice. It is pretty. I'm it's, really still happy with our with our old one. You know, we got the too. 13T, yeah. and I love it. I know. So this one ha um, has much smaller bezel. Um, it has touch support built in now. It oh, has nice. Windows Hello built in. Oh, nice. Uh, the speakers have been moved, so they're no longer on the sides. Now they're in the middle. Um, so they've done a lot of nice changes. And I, I was saying to Paul when I first got it, I'm like, you know what? It's a little bit less lappable, though, because yep. it's a little more You're brutal top with heavy. that stuff. She though. really is. Are, that lappable thing, man. But the more I, I'm using it, I've been taking. I took it on this trip. Um, it is a very good machine, and I feel like I didn't think the battery life was noticeably better. But now that I've used it a bit more, I'm like, it's at least comparable to the old one, and slightly better. There you go. So it's a nice. It's you know, it's not a major upgrade to to me to the old one. I still also like the old one that Leo and I oh, both have. It's but the prettiest laptop ever. It really white, is. The white and gold sounds very nice. The white and gold's nice, yeah. but the the brown one is better balanced. I will say. Okay. To to me. Okay. It doesn't make me want to switch out for a Surface. I really think this HP's got the laptop. Your game. needs are different. Yeah. Although I think the My Surface laptop is pretty yeah. close, so you 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 wouldn't be uncomfortable with the Surface laptop. No, I would. I would. I like this a way. Oh, you do. A way way oh. many times better than yeah. the Surface laptop. It's not a wedge. It's flat, so it doesn't it doesn't get it thicker at the back. It's just a, it's yeah. like as thin yeah. as you could. I've never. I mean, it, it really is. You it's can't pretty unique. Get thinner than this. Yeah. It is. Yep. Yeah, Surface Laptop, you know, it, I, all the gift guides are coming out now and recommended products for the year. And almost everybody's got Surface Laptop on 
And I wouldn't put that on my list if yeah, I were yeah. doing a list. It is. Everybody's kind of, it seems to be a, reaching a consensus. It's the best laptop of the year. But I, yeah, I like these. I like these yeah. HPs. I do too. And uh, for funky, uh, you can't beat Lenovo's ThinkPads. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if you I want, know. you know, robust and funky. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't like Surface Laptop. Uh, I, I get that. Obviously, it has one USB port, which is ridiculous. Um, it's interesting to me, though, how many people love this thing and how it's getting all these awards and yeah. picks for your holiday gift guides. It's the type of yeah. thing people would typically do for Apple. You know, you ship this thing that doesn't seem to make any sense and everyone loves it, you know. Yeah. But I just, I mean, having finally gotten one in the house recently, I mean, I have to say, it is, it's beautiful. You yeah. know, it's, it's, um, it's beautiful to look at, and it's it it really does have that kind of special something. I think the HP you have does as well too, by the way, the kind of pale gold and white version, especially. Yeah. But I I mean I get it. I get why I get why people are excited about it. Yeah, yeah. That's the good thing about Windows laptops. There's a lot of choice. Right. Uh, I see also that the, as long as we're on the Surface Book 2, uh, mm -hmm. there's a firmware update already. Is this the, you know, I just got, and we were talking yesterday on Security Now about the Intel management engine. And of course, it's got a nasty yep. flaw in it that allows, yeah. <laughs> allows you to plug in a USB device and uh, mm -hmm. own the computer. Um, oh, no, that's not a flaw, Leo. That's a feature. Well, it was a feature to the engineers who put it in, obviously. We, you know, we can yeah. modify the firmware from the USB mm. port. You, you know, you could always do this if you open the thing up, but having it available mm. on the USB port is kind of... Mm -hmm. Using the JTAG interface is kind of mm. weird. But anyway, uh, Intel pushed out an update to by Lenovo's yeah. already for the management engine that I think fixes that. Um, could it be that's what this firmware update is? I, I think Lenovo's, according to Steve, was the first and only one so far. I don't think that's what this is, only because they would have done it for all Surface books, yeah, they, all well, Surface devices, right? Yeah. If they um, all have the Intel management, I guess they do. I mean, they're I think all, they would, yeah. yeah. The No, this was just, um, uh, a lot of it was uh, for mixed reality. I do stuff, see there's a reason. firmware update, though, in the UEFI. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it could be. I mean, it could be part of it, for sure. Maybe. I, but I, I, don't, yeah. I don't recall that being it. The other thing is the... The big documentation for these updates comes out separately from the notification that there are updates. So I don't believe that the the blog that covers this, which I think is called Surface for IT Pros, has posted yet what's mm. what the stuff really is. You know, we can see what the individual bits are, but we don't really have a lot of explanation for what they're trying to accomplish. <laughs> it's an update. Don't worry your pretty little head. Exactly. Just take it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. If we wanted to talk about it, we wouldn't have put it in Windows Update. Just yeah. install it. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, Gigabyte is rolling out some fixes too, uh, bit by bit. So I get. I think all the laptops you'll get firmware updates for the management engine. One hopes. Yeah. Soon. I would think so. One hopes. Soon. Yeah. One hopes. One hopes. It's a service, Leo. They can do it anytime they want. Yeah. They don't have to wait mm -hmm. for Tuesday. No. Mm -mm. You know. Hey, if you guys will wait for a moment, I'd like to talk about our fine sponsor, and then we'll continue on Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, brought to you today by Captera, a great solution for anybody who needs to find business software, software to run their uh, dog walking business or their yoga studio or their dentist's office. Captera, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A.com. We're getting to the... You know, time is short, the end of the year, and there's no reason at all to spend more time at the office than you have to. I want you to go to captera.com slash windows. Don't go, you know, the worst thing you can do if you're looking for uh, enterprise, or I hate to use the word enterprise, business software, the worst thing you can do is to go to Google and search. I need uh, software for my yoga studio. 500 plus categories here at Captera. It's free. There's no sign up involved. You just go. It's a directory and it's great. And man, everything from uh, applicant tracking software, augmented reality software, big data, business continuity, business intelligence, car rental, child care, chiropractic, uh, com commercial loan software, construction. Let's say construction estimating software. How big category can that be? Well, co-construct, stack, clear estimates, MEP estimating, NOFI, SAGE estimating, builder tend, wind duct and wind pipe, 
CoreCon, pre-built. I can go on and on. There's lots of them. Here's a list of them all, and then, ooh, I love this. Filter the results based on the sub, you know, on the, the product rating. I'm gonna only look. I don't want to look at anything that less than four stars. How many users it supports, whether it's web-based or installed on your machine, and then the features. Well, I need bid bid management. I need change orders. Uh, I need a cost database and customer management. I don't know. I'm what I'm. I'm just. And now, oh yeah. Well, here you go. Noify CoreCon. I like that CoreCon. Let's add that to the comparison. See, at the bottom, I'm building up a little comparison chart. This is all free. Uh, just check that. And now we're going to say, here we go. Let's compare all of those right now. Look at this. Look at this. I get the ratings. I get the features. I get the cost. I get whether there's a free trial or a free version, what, what platforms it runs on, if they have mobile the features, screenshots, and then, best of all, reviews. Reviews from people like you, real users, carefully cultivated reviews, so they make sure there's no phony reviews in there. And you won't waste your time on free trials that go nowhere. Captera's thousands of ratings and reviews from software users like you mean you're going to know exactly what's right for you. And this is free. Look, 2018's here before you know it. Make sure you got the software your business needs today to help you do what you do better. There is no better place to go. C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. -R -R -A, more than 500 categories of business software. No sign-up. No salesman will call. <laughs> Just go to... It's free. Captera.com. Just join the millions who use Captera. Captera.com slash Windows. Let's, let's uh, make sure they know that you heard it here by going to captera.com slash windows. Find the software that saves your business and you time. captera.com slash windows. And we thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, and uh, there has been a leak. <laughs> and it is not a gas leak in Paul's new mansion. No. It is... <laughs> I know. For Fend, perish the thought. No, is there's a, no gas here, Leo. It, do you not have gas? Is going up. It's going up the old-fashioned way. You, you just have electricity? There's no gas, huh? Yeah. Oh. Are you on well water? No. Septic <laughs> no, tank? No, no, no. no. We, we have sewage. And we have water nice. delivery. Okay. So you're in, you're, in, you're in, well, hey, it's, it's like the best of Lower McCungie. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not like that upper McCungie. Not that upper McCungie. Oh. Those hicks, they wouldn't know a water pipe if it hit them in the head. No, it's I'm important sorry. when you live here to understand the difference between a hick and a redneck. Ooh. You it's a think, subtle distinction. Yeah, you wouldn't think Pennsylvania has rednecks. Oh. Well, oh, but it does. <laughs> Please. Allow, allow me to bring you up to the local McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, all right. Getting back to the uh, subject, right? <laughs> uh, Windows 10 uh, features leak, something new. I, yeah, this so quick this, pair looks really cool to me. I'm looking forward to yeah. this. Oh, yeah. No, all, actually, all of these are incredibly useful. But what's interesting about them, a couple of things, is uh, one, Microsoft hasn't announced any of them yet. And two, when are we going to find out what, what Microsoft intends to put in this release of Windows? You know, oh, when yeah. you think about the timing of the release and you think about the usual disclosure time before that release, we are well past that date. And, um, you know, last year, for example, when they started talking about the creators update was shipped in March, April, uh, they announced the, that release in October. You know, so yeah. it is fully a month later than that and uh, nothing. So... We get new builds uh, every so often. In fact, I think we just got one today, by the way, which we don't have in the we notes, did. but we did get we did yep. get a new I build. I added it. Oh, it's you did. There. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and, you know, most of them have some form of newness to them, but whatever the new feature or features are, uh, but not these three features. And these are all really cool. So the first one is Quick Pair, which is a uh, Bluetooth Quick Pair uh, kind of function, which is very similar to the way that Apple does things now with, I think, I think with its AirPods and, and is how Google does things with its own, uh, what are they called? Pixel buds <laughs> or whatever. But the idea is that it's a proximity based type of thing. So you bring the Bluetooth device up to your PC in this case, and it will just connect. You don't have to go through the little secret handshake thing, uh, to pair the devices, which is often painful, which is why they invented NFC, uh, partially. 
Um, and uh, I think it was last week or maybe the week before we talked about a Stardock utility mm-hmm. whose name is now escaping me. But basically what it allows groupie. you to do is it's called groupie. groupie. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, to basically have windows that have multiple tabs that are all different applications. Uh, Microsoft is actually adding this feature to Windows 10, um, apparently only for UWP apps, by the way. But the idea here is that you can have multiple applications all running off of a single window. And I think of this as sort of a, the a poor person's not the right way to say it, the, kind of the um, normal person's version of virtual desktops, right? You know, virtual desktops mm-hmm. is a very powerful feature. Uh, Microsoft has, has tried to promote it in Windows 10. I don't think normal people can use it, frankly. I think it's a little too technical. Um, there's also some limitations to it, by the way. For example, you can't save your environments. Like, you can't always have your computer come up with certain desktops with certain apps, uh, which I think would be useful. Um, but this will bundle apps together into a single window, and you can kind of, uh, I assume, you can control tab your way through them like you do through browser tabs. It's a good idea. But you know um, what, Groupie, uh, yes. so so Groupie, though, lets you do a bunch of other things that I'm going to be curious to see if Microsoft lets yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, one yeah. thing it does let you do is take Chrome apps and sites and group those mm-hmm. together with non Chrome apps and sites. And I would guess Microsoft's not going to do that, right? I would guess they're (laughs) going to limit this to Edge and UWP would be my guess. Um, Mm -hmm. So uh, also the Stardock one, the Groupie application supports older versions of Windows, like 7, 8.1, and 10. So I'm guessing for Microsoft, this is going to be a Windows 10 only feature. Oh, totally. That would be my yeah. assumption, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, is uh, so, Groupie yeah, out of beta? Because I, I bought Stardux no. Object Desktop right away, but uh, it no, doesn't have Groupie. Not yet. yet. Yeah. Not till not till sometime in December. It'll be out of beta. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I know. The third one is, uh, assume I don't know how they're going to do it exactly as far as the keyboard command, but one of the things I really do like about the Mac, you kind of have to learn it, but uh, but it works great, which is, the key next to the space bar, I don't have a Mac keyboard in front of me, but I think it's that little squiggly thing or whatever it is. You kind of tap that in the space bar and you get a spotlight search bar right in the center of the screen. Yeah. Fan and key, then you we t- call it. Yeah. What is it? The fan key or the... The fan key. It's the same <laughs> as the Windows key. Because it looks like a little... You know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Or the, con- yeah. Uh, the uh, command... Com- the technical, I think, is command key. There you go. So I, I hope on Windows they actually use... Win- Windows key space bar would be great, but That'd however awesome. they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing I've always kind of said about start search, no matter what it is, if it's Cortana search or start search or whatever, is that it it it, it is really easy to use. You know, you hit one key, which is the Windows key, and you just start typing, and it will do search results, and they kind of appear down in the corner, and uh, it works fine. You know, it is it's fine. But I always really like the Apple approach to this because it puts it right where you where you're looking. It's right in the middle of the screen, and and if you're a touch typist, you kind of you can just do it very naturally. You can launch applications, find documents, files, whatever it is. Um, Great. So uh, I hope I hope they get it right because <laughs> that's yeah. that's one of the very few features from the Mac I've ever wanted on Windows, and uh, it, it would be a good it'd be a good add. Mm-hmm. So I I added something to the notes after you put that item in that mm-hmm. I just found out about. I've been trying to find I've been trying to get more information on it. Uh, a guy who listens to Windows Weekly named Glenn Press said to mm-hmm. me, "Hey, did you know Microsoft dropped?" the Delve application for Windows 10. What? And I said, oh, you mean, I said, you mean the phone app? And he said, no, the oh. Windows 10 app. Oh. And so I, I was like, what? Are you kidding? This was like one of the showcase yeah. apps yeah. for Windows 10. This is okay. the thing Microsoft used to call Flipbook. Like it was like Flipbook for Windows 10. It shows you all the people and the documents that you have, that you have access to and that you've been working on together. And so he just gave me the link and it says, hey, Office Dell for Windows 10 is no longer supported. And we removed it from the Windows Store. So I, well, I've okay. been on, but use Go the ahead, web, use the web app instead, right? So I said, okay. And so I've been trying to find out why they did that. And the why is what's very interesting because it has to do with search. So remember when we talked about Bing for Business at Ignite and how Microsoft is kind of um, changing the whole way people search for applications and and people and all. They said Delve is one of our personalized search experiences powered by the Microsoft Graph. And we're- I think it was the first one, right? It was. And we're working on how to surface search results across Office and Windows. So that's the reason they are giving for taking away the app. They're saying we want to focus on 
a different way of surfacing search for people. And this idea is we will still let you use Delve, but only as a web app. We don't want you to use it as a standalone app because we're trying to make more of a unified, um, coherent search experience that hmm. um, works in a way that's more intuitive, I guess. So it, it's kind of a weird explanation for why they did this and, and the how in terms of just, hey, we pulled the app from the store and never told yeah. anyone is also kind of interesting too. Well, especially since it was kind of like the flagship Microsoft Graph it was. app I know. or whatever. It um, was. Yep. I thought you were going to say they were going to make it into a web app. And I know, the that's Teams what route. I thought. That's what I thought. I thought, oh, maybe they're going to make this one of these PWAs, progressive web apps. Mm. No, is, they're not. That's interesting. I know. Yeah, very, very interesting. So it, obviously, you know, given the search thing that you guys found in the last Windows 10 build and this, they're definitely playing around with how to make search even more deeply integrated into Windows and Office and have a more, I would say, more unified search experience in some way. So like, this may be one of the big focuses of the next version of Windows 10. Okay. Something about right. search. In other words, it I'm makes more sense for it just to be there. Right. Work across Instead your, you if, you, if you sign into Office 365, you just get it. Yep. yep. Rather than have a standalone app, you have to find it and install. Exactly. I mean, that makes sense, but I, it, it's it kind of strange that they would get rid of it before they had that next thing yeah. in place. I mean, they have the they have the web version, version, which they're not getting rid of as far as I know. Um, so okay. you can still use it, but you just can't use the standalone app anymore. I wonder if it's a resources thing, like the people that were working on that are now working on the new thing. And they can't really maintain yeah. it. Yeah. Hmm. What if we get? What if Redstone Four is Windows Ten? Um, something about search, search. edition or uh, search edition. <laughs> search update. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Could be. I don't know. Yep. Well, you said something earlier about maybe they'll focus on productivity for this version, and this would f certainly fall into that category. In fact, yeah, you could make the argument that that tabs feature I was talking about yep. uh, is and the search thing. Uh, you know, kind of coalesce into that uh, not a lot of creativity there you know uh, yeah more although you know they try to they try to pretend i wouldn't say pretend they try to say that you know even people who are working with excel spreadsheets are creators like there's yeah, they um, seem like they're steering away from the, pro the productivity word right they keep I mean, they want to say creator creator instead of pr um, productivity or yeah. office worker this is the company some. that markets a tablet as a laptop though so i know yeah okay yeah. They should rename no themselves to Excel semantics. Fans, no, yes, that's a bad <laughs> yeah. joke. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, we're, I mean, yeah, semantics is one thing. This is kind of stretching the bounds of, <laughs> you know, is. definition, I would say. But yeah. A word means exactly what I wish it to. Yeah. Well, by the way, welcome to the Everyone's a Winner Society, because that's probably true today. Yeah. Yeah. It is whatever I say it is. Yeah. Isn't that the caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> um, well, bye bye, Delve. I was just getting used to you. I know. Yeah. I just started using it because of Mary Jo. She told me about Delve, and I started down. I I yeah, man. Yeah, man. Why did you stare him wrong? You I don't know, wrong, guys. Mary Jo. Who, who can keep up with which apps are being deprecated and which aren't? It's hard to. Uh, well, we, usually, we need a spreadsheet. Especially when it's not documented <laughs> it anyway. Should, it should I mean, be first yeah. in, first out, though, really. I, know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Last in, first out. Uh, sorry, yeah. Microsoft. We're a, we had a good run. <laughs> yeah, that's the one to get rid of. Yeah. 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 Mm, we're going to do that as a progressive web app. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You'll download features for the next, well, for the rest of your life, frankly. <laughs> Windows yeah. 10S still sucks. Yep. <laughs> Thinking that's a Paul Thorat headline. It's true. Um, you know, I. this one's hard for me because I... I am buying into the vision for Windows 10 S. I, I, I think they are correct to pursue this. I think the platform needs this. And I think if this thing works, the, this is the future of Windows. There's no doubt about it. Um, as of today, however, it is a steaming pile of garbage. And it is impossible for anyone to actually use this thing every single day. And, and when I say that, I, I almost mean it literally. I know someone out there is going to wave their hand and say, what are you talking about? I use it every single day. It's fine. Um, there's so many reasons why this is true. But... Um, I will just say, generally speaking, that everyone on Earth has some application, some hardware device, some something that's not going to work at all or fully with Windows 10 S. And I'll give you a great modern example. It just shipped um, the Microsoft 
uh, Surface Precision mouse, which is really nice. Um, you can plug it into a Windows 10S or um, connect it over Bluetooth to a Windows 10S PC. It works fine. But what you don't get is the ability to customize it in any way. So it has all these buttons you can customize with macros and different functions. You can change the way things work. Um, that thing is a desktop application. There is no way to do that on Windows 10S. That's a Microsoft device. Um, I, you will you will run into this kind of thing. I was updating the book over the weekend, uh, the Windows 10 book, and I test everything on Windows 10S now because I want to be able to document when things don't work properly on that system. This is not something I'd put in the book, but the all-in-one printer, you know, you get a printer, scanner, uh, fax machine, whatever it is. Um, it will not install on Windows 10 S. You know, it requires a software download that is a Win32 app, and it literally won't even let you use it. It doesn't even provide basic functionality. So that's not good. Um, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, best case scenario on Windows 10 S is that something will just work. You can plug in a mouse and the mouse cursor spins around when you move it. It works fine. That's fine. Uh, a lot of people don't need to customize buttons and that kind of stuff. I get it. Most printers, frankly, probably will work okay. Actually, now that I'm talking about this, I seem to recall Mary Jo had a problem with the printer too. But Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> most of them, you know, you'll get kind of basic functionality, right? You're not going to get the custom application that lets you print to the edge and change out the, the color output and all that, you know, all that kind of cool stuff that some people like to do, you know. But it's just, I think... The problem with Windows 10 S is twofold. It looks like Windows and doesn't do everything Windows does, including running Windows apps, which, you know, categorically is insane. Um, the other problem is is that there are things that are like Windows 10 S that actually work better for most people. Um, I think a Chromebook actually makes a lot more sense for most people. Sorry, Microsoft. And I don't agree with this personally. I, I don't see it this way. But some people think that an iPad Pro or an iPad might be a better kind of computer, if you will, you know, like as Satya Nadell would say, a, you know, not a real computer, but like a sort of computer, um, maybe meets the needs better for more people than Windows 10 S. And, and this is a problem, you know, um, because I feel like when Windows, like real Windows, is the most uh, capable, you know, um, professional, whatever, mainstream computing system there is. Windows 10 S is like, ugh, it's awful. It's like, you know, it's like someone you know, brings in a car and the engine's missing or something. Like, it looks beautiful, and then you go to use it. You're like, what's going on? What, what is this? You know, um, it's it's a problem. So, anyway, six months in, and on the second major version, I don't think the story has changed a lot. Um, there are more apps. By the way, the App Store has gotten better. There's no doubt about that. It's not quite, you know, where anyone would want it, but it's it's starting to move along a little bit. Uh, iTunes is not there yet. Um, I yeah. get questions about that every week. I'm confused by that. I don't know why anyone would want to use this application, but um, as a proof of concept of sorts, uh, supposedly that's coming soon. Um, some, some, I mean, you don't have to have it for an iPhone, but remember the iPhone is, you know, about 50% of all the smartphones in the U.S. And yep. people who buy iPhones may quite realist, reasonably want to have support for their iPhone on their desktop. Yeah, I don't right. think that's unreasonable. Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking of it more as like a music application yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but no, but, um, and, you'd, and you you yeah. you can have an iPhone without uh, uh, iTunes, but it's the easiest yeah. way to back it up. For instance, is yeah. to back it up to. I, I I I don't understand. Well, I guess I do understand, but it's <laughs> it, it's semi surprising to me that Apple has not done Apple Music on computers. You know that yeah, some that kind of cloud based subscription. Well, that's iTunes. I mean, and but it's not not really right. I mean, it doesn't work very well for that. Um, well, that's just it's, it's, it even work very well. That's the it, real problem. Yeah, right. I mean, even you know, Groove for all of its troubles was a good example of a simple app that yeah. worked well. You know, better. Did, yeah, did the job. It was yeah. good. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Well, um, yeah, I can You know, I think I guess the problem is expectations. Uh, should Microsoft maybe do? I guess that would be RT something like a Chromebook that uh, isn't Windows. Isn't that yeah. the problem that it says Windows, but it isn't? I think I think they think well, that Windows 10s yeah. is the operating system that is most like the Chromebook. Like that that would be their yeah. Chromebook competitor, but from OEMs, right? So some of these OEMs who are making cheap laptops and cheap tablets, who they're hoping are going to put Windows 10s on it, that's what they think would be their true alternative to the Chromebook. Yeah, I understand that, but yeah. I think is, Paul's but point is well taken that it's it's Windows. Yeah. 
So people yeah. are going to expect Windows like capabilities. It's not yeah. right. Although, it's not Windows. wrong to expect people to have those expectations. Like that's that is the problem. You know, yeah. it's so for me. You, like it was the problem with RT. Right. right. So for me, when I reviewed the Windows laptop earlier this year, for me, the hardware was the problem, but not the OS. <laughs> you know, I was okay with We have never been 10X. so far apart on anything I in know. life as these two things. Like, I know. Like uh, for me, like Windows 10S, I think is, I agree with you, it hasn't improved much in the past six months, but I feel like yeah. there is a group of people for whom it will be okay. I do. I think they're I, the okay. people who don't really have but, Win32 apps. Until I, the I day they try like, to get their printer working right. Right. Like, yeah, oh, that's the thing. Right, so that, that's okay. that's my point. Like, yeah. I I I I feel like we had this conversation in like August or something. <laughs> like this exact conversation. And but, it's the same conversation. It is. Like, yeah. I, I, I need, the truth is. Need, sorry. Good. I, I was just gonna say I don't need my printer to do all the special things. If it just would print words on a piece of paper, I would be okay. It's fine. And it does that, right? <sighs> it does. Okay. It does like the basics, right? And yeah. and so. I feel like there there are some people like I I almost never print I print maybe like twice a year. But that's no, just one uh, example. Right. No, no, iTunes I don't would be actually, another I example. I, I mean, there are other either. examples. Chrome, <laughs> but is frankly yeah. an example. Yeah, right. Yeah, you don't. You cannot use Chrome. Yep. And so just, you run along just fine until you find, yeah. run up against that one thing, and who knows what it'll be. That's that my, you, that is you my say. Point. Well, wait a minute. I thought this was that, Windows. That one thing yeah. will always happen. It will always happen. It's not a matter of you know if it's it, it, it will happen. That's that is my point. That's and I mean, the problem, and again, I I don't mean it literally, literally, but I mean it basically, literally. <laughs> like, it's an expectation like it will, issue. Yeah, yeah, it will happen. I mean, I, I think they, with the Surface laptop, I've been to, trying to keep it. Sorry. Yeah. No, sorry. I I'm, I'm having a little lag, so that's why I keep talking at the same time you're talking. So sorry. Um, no, that's I, right. He, he's a man. That's why he talks while you're talking. <laughs> that's right. Let me explain this to a man's <laughs> name, Steve, Rachel. Um, this is why this happens. Um, no, I yeah. I think I think what they're trying to do is train people to have a new set of expectations, right? Sure. I mean. I, I agree with both of you guys that they're like somebody who's used Windows their whole life and that you run up against the one thing and you're like, OK, uh, I can't do X. Right. And I'm, I'm annoyed. But for me, when that happened, when I was using 10S, I was like, OK, you know what? I can't use Chrome. I, I use Chrome every day. Let me try using Edge because I haven't really tried it. And for most things, it worked fine. And I think they're hoping right. I think their hope is over the time. <laughs> This will, the, the mindset will change. Yeah. That's what I think. I, uh, unfortunately, but what they're literally doing is they, they are a change in our expectations. They're lowering our expectations because right. there's things they could do to make this so much better. For example, their own mouse could have a utility that's a UWP app that actually lets you change the buttons. They didn't do that. Sure. I don't know why. Sure. Yeah. Um, the built-in applications in Windows 10 have gotten a little bit better over time. But you know what? They still kind of suck, don't they? Yeah. I mean, yeah. what... Why, why aren't these things professional looking? I, I, I don't yeah. understand why they're not better. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not stuck in my ways. I don't mean it like that. I mean, you know, I, I don't personally have a need to print very often, for example, or right. I, I, you know, I'm not going to change the buttons on the mouse either. I, I, yeah. I am observing these things and pointing them up because for some people that's the deal breaker. Right. And it is. I feel like what I've seen with Windows 10 S is that that deal breaker will occur for everybody at some point because yeah. I, I have, you know, I've been using it with Windows 10 S. I, I, you know, I normally use a certain app for writing. Yeah. It's not, a, it's a desktop app. I can't use that. Yeah. I use this other thing. That's a UWP app. It doesn't work as good, but it works good enough. I, I'm yeah. okay with it. Um, mm -hmm. Adobe Photoshop Elements is there. Great. Um, Office apps are there. Fantastic. I don't get to use the web browser. Like you said, it's okay. It's, it's not, yeah. not what I want. I don't mean to be weird in particular about it. I, I can't do the, <laughs> You know, the pinned yeah. web apps that I do in Chrome, which I really like. Yeah. Okay. You know, like I can live with it. Um, but that's the thing. Like Windows, I mean, I, I look, for all its complexity, for all the problems, Windows is ultimately where it is because it is a no compromises experience. And Windows 10S is the opposite of that. It's nothing but compromises. Okay. It's, you're asking the user I'd to compromise. A <laughs> right. right. And so that is the audience I think they're going after. Kids who yeah. don't have expectations. Well, I noticed the new Apple ads where the kid's working with an iPad and I know, so it says something yeah. about a computer and the kid says, what's a computer? Right. They don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. I um, 
I've retitled that ad. If I w- if uh, if I was publishing that ad, I would call it entitled. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, see, yeah. this is what Microsoft should be doing. You know, and it's like, well, okay, but this is a child whose right. parents have spent over a thousand dollars on <laughs> right. this, not a computer. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's cute, but that not everyone can do that. Yeah. Which plainly I still, is a computer, obviously. I know. I still will go back to what I said earlier this summer and sound like a broken record. I think there's a group of people like me who have very low needs who could yeah. get who could get Windows 10 S to work for them and be – there would be compromises, but I think there would not be enough deal breakers to make them say, oh, forget it. Like I could live in Windows 10 S. I'm positive I could. Wow. Yep. Positive. Wow. Because my needs are so simple. Like I, <laughs> I use a computer, but my needs are really simple. Like for Your me, it's overkill. Are few. It's a, an, it's total overkill for me to have a laptop like this HP, right? I mean, yeah, it really is. But I like it. But it's like overkill. Yeah, I'm a simple how, person. How would the Windows 10 S experience be compromised for you if you could run Chrome? It wouldn't at all. Right. So. What what was that decision about? <laughs> you know, I mean, like that. You know, this that is decision just, is about Microsoft versus Google, and yeah. our strategy is Edge. Yeah, I, I mean, I I think they there's don't a much care bigger about the user. Like they care about making money from Microsoft. I mean, okay, they're going to say they care about the user, but they really are trying to make us all use Edge. They're trying to force us, right? Oh, this is That's, that conversation we had a little while ago. It's, it, it, are you yeah. chasing competition? Or are you chasing your customers? And it's like. Yeah. They say they're it's hard to the respect customers. something that was built out of this mentality, you know. But that's the world. That's the business world. I feel like. I guess I. I don't think even when customer, even when companies like Microsoft say we're all about the customer, they also are about staying in business, right? I mean, that's <laughs> sure, <their business>. sure. <laughs> How selfish. Well, they How could be both, is. right? I mean, I often. I mean, wouldn't you yeah. expect that serving the customer is uh, the best A way good to stay decision. in business? Yeah. Yeah. Except Th- I is- think that. Browser is so important to their strategy as a company making operating systems that I think they will not let, for at least for the foreseeable future, their strategy but, is not. To- <laughs> That's what got so, Microsoft in trouble, though, over the last few decades was this yes. these uh, fiefdoms that said, "Well, you, thou shalt not injure yeah. w- Office, thou shalt yeah. not hurt Windows." Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, and it, I, then I, that was protecting the company, not protecting the customer. Yeah. I'm also no, going to no just the broken record. No technology companies really care about the customer. I'm going to throw that out there. Wow. Yeah, do actually, think, that's depressing. Do you think yeah, they no, do? I, I, I agree <laughs> with that. I agree. I mean, well, they do. All Amazon very- says, and maybe this is what makes Amazon unique, that the way they're going to succeed, obviously, you know, every company in the long run is looking out for itself just like every right. human in the long run is exactly. looking out sure. for itself sure. but some companies see a virtue and a way of looking out for yourself is to is to be customer centric that's what amazon claims anyway and i think they to yeah, some they degree all claim do that it. no they all claim it don't they yeah well right but uh, it's look you you could be a company that does nothing but pull your customers to find out what they want right i don't think that actually works <laughs> because I don't either. I don't either. there's no one went to Amazon and said, "Hey, um, you know what would be great? You guys should make a like a speaker that I can talk to, and um, and then what I could do is maybe buy stuff using my voice." Um, that's a, yeah. that is the dumbest idea in the history of mankind, and it's right. a kind of a best-selling product right now. Exactly. You know, somebody somebody came up with this idea. You know, I mean, Apple famously talks about how custom people don't know what they want. You know, our job is to tell them what they want to come up with that thing that they will want. Um, yep. Windows 10 S is, just, you can't make this argument for Windows 10 S. It doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, who wanted so that? I, I don't know. That is I just feel like a company, de- that is a product designed by a company for a company's interests. That's, there's no question. And it, Right, and it's hard to support something like that, you know, for me. I, I, uh, I, I've said this many times. I, there's, a, there's a middle ground approach to, that can get Microsoft to this future where something like Windows 10 S is what's happening. Um, you don't get there by chopping off everything right now. You know, you, you can get to it. There are there are people out there who probably today, or these would be technical people, who go into Windows settings and they flip that little switch where it says, don't let me install Star Apps, you know? And yep. they do that. Yep. It's pointless. It is the most pointless configuration change you can make. 
Just don't go <laughs> to the store. It's not like right. these things are. Oh, well, actually, don't don't browse the web, I guess, because they're only getting store apps. Um, you know, you, you <laughs> like, but but, yeah. but there is something. There's the seed of an idea there because Windows 10 could go to great lengths to warn you about the uh, the dangers of these apps as you try to download and install them on your computer. You know, they they, they could warn you. You right. know, it, it, the idea could be like, we have a 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. We're going to get these apps in the store. We're going to figure it out. You know, yeah. in the meantime, we understand you have to get, you know, life occurs. You have to get work done. So we're going to let you do it. But, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit of a pain about it. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you could yeah. turn off those warnings if you wanted. Yeah. Um, I think going full stop is just the, all you're going to, all you're doing is infuriating people. Yeah. Maybe. I, I wasn't infuriated by the OS. I was infuriated by the fuzzy keyboard. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, I agree with you, though, that it's about the same situation as it was six months ago. I don't think they've made it a yeah, better yeah. or different It's gone, It's better. It, it, it actually very closely parallels Edge for me, uh, Microsoft yeah. Edge, right? Yep. Um, added more it, it is definitely to... improved. There's no yep. doubt about it. Yep. Still doesn't meet my needs. It's getting yep. closer. You know. You you are so not the audience for Windows 10 S. No, I get that, but I'm also I can also step outside of my own special needs. Yeah. You know, I'm not. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm not that stuck You're in my ways. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, the mouse thing was crazy to me. The printer. These things yeah. all kind of happened in a few days of each other, and I was like, what? Yeah. You know. And you run into because I'm writing the book. You know, you you can see these like really minor ways that Windows yeah. 10 F S differs from uh, normal versions of Windows 10 from time to time. Uh, there's some weird edge behavior that's different on Windows 10 S, yeah. and um, it all kinds of adds. It adds up over after a while. It's like you know, it's easy to point out the big stuff, but there are these little things, and I feel like that's what grates you know, on people. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, it's what grates on me. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> And I just think it's great. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Uh, Fine. Do you want to talk about the uh, new Windows 10 build? That just uh, It's a fast yeah. only thing, right? Yep. Right. It just came out right before the show. It's build 17046 for PC testers. And it's going to, just like the last couple builds, a couple of um, semi-interesting features, but mostly fixes. So that you now... in Edge can do form fill for address fields, um, text spacing coming to reading view. There were some things about um, accessing advanced UWP options right from start. Uh, so all kinds of like nice little, little niceties and lots of fixes. Lots of emoji things if you're an emoji person. Emoji data overhaul for touch keypads. I'm, I'm like, I'm so interested in how much... Microsoft is focusing on emoji with Windows 10. Like every build, it's like one of the things they star in, in the notes. I am like, okay, it's nice. They've got emoji. Um, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an adult. I don't see the need for this. Maybe I'm just so, again, not who they're targeting with this. Um, and then there is one I saw in the list of general changes that's interesting. They You now can view and manage your activity history when Cortana gives you that option to pick up where you left off so that's kind of nice a nice change a whole bunch a whole list though of fairly minor changes um around menu layouts keyboard text suggestions all those kinds of things so yeah they they're continuing and like paul said earlier in the show they still haven't really told us what the big features are going to be in this release if there are going to be any big features in the next release nor do we know the official name they still have not told us that I've heard they oh, have wow. a bunch of names uh, that they've been considering, but I don't know what is in the list of names. I, I, you know, that's interesting what you just said. Um, even if there will be major updates, I, I was just thinking the other day that, you know, this constant update thing, you know, we can kind of go back and forth over whether it's working or whether it's a good idea or whatever. But, yeah. you know, at some point, don't you just run out of stuff to do? I mean, yeah. how much more yeah. can you add to this thing? I mean, what's the point? I know. Um, it, it works fine like, right now. I mean, do I need anything else? I know. You know what I wonder if they're going to go back to, and maybe they'll never say they're doing this, but remember in the mm -hmm. old days of Windows, they would do a major release yeah. and a minor release. I wonder if we're going to do that with, with the insider builds, like something they call yeah. the major release. So they might call Fall Creators Update major. 
Um, and then the spring update is the minor release where it's a bunch of, yeah, like nice features, (laughs) but huge, right? Nothing big. I think that makes tons of sense. There's way too much to digest. And, you know, we were talking about 10 S and whether it would or would not impact normal people, whatever. Um, I, I, uh, the, the sheer amount of stuff that's in Windows 10 today, I think it can be a little overwhelming to people. Most people just never even explore to find out what's going on. Yeah. Um, Microsoft tries to promote this stuff in various ways as pop-ups and little you know, notifications in the Action Center and everything. But uh, you know, at some point, it, it just seems like you're treading water. Like, what's, the, yeah. you know, what's the benefit here? I mean, I, I, I used to... Make fun of is not the right word, but I, w- I often noted that with macOS in particular or with uh, iOS as well, a lot of those releases were fairly evolutionary. Uh, yeah. Apple always promoted them all as revolutionary Big Bang releases. I think there's something to be said for just getting it right, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. slowing down a little bit. Um, so I I would support that 100%. I think that's a great idea. Now, or they might be waiting for the launch of Windows 10 on ARM to talk about the next version all up, yep. maybe. Yep. Yep. And that, okay. if that is the case, then we should know in December because they've said publicly there will be Windows 10 PCs with ARM processors out before the end of the calendar year from their partners. Yeah. So, and there is a think, Qualcomm event coming up. Um, right. That, That's right. Where this stuff will be a big deal. So. Yeah. Did you see the new uh, iMac Pros are going to have an ARM chip as well as an mm-hmm. Intel chip? Mm-hmm. In them? It's an Apple ARM chip. It's their A10 uh, yeah. processor, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. A coprocessor. I, I think we talked about this before, but, you know, we the, 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 that Alan Kay phrase, you know, if you're going to make software, you have to make yeah, hardware has been right. floating around for uh, um, a long time. But And everyone says it. You know, Microsoft says it. Google says it. Obviously, Apple says it. Um and I think we think of that in overly simplistic ways. Like, in other words, we, you have to make a phone. You know, you have to make a computer. Yeah. Um, I think the bigger deal is that kind of stuff, the custom processor stuff. Um, Surface Pro kind of under heralded, but the new Surface Pro has a custom processor in it, made uh, designed by Microsoft at least, that uh, makes the pen more accurate, right? Mm-hmm. So you can use the pen on other surfaces, yeah. but if you use it on Surface Pro, it actually Absolutely. works better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that kind of thing is a big deal and Apple uh, suddenly has a lot of experience with this um, iPhones have tons of di- custom chips in them the new MacBook Pro has the what is it the touch ID sensor uh, yeah, for purchases it a, built little, into it it's a T1 a little uh, tiny arm chip in there but it's just for yeah, the touch I mean, I, yeah. this is you know when Apple shipped uh, I'm sorry when Apple um, switched <laughs> to Intel mm-hmm. several years ago 100 years ago whatever that was um, at, all of a sudden they were just making typical Intel-based Windows laptops and putting Mac OS X on them. There's real, no real differentiation there other than the design of the hardware and so forth. Now, they have the ability to really differentiate and they could stay with Intel as the core of the platform but add these custom chips and and really differentiate the, the hardware. I think that's a... I guess in a way, it's excellent. Intel yeah. partnering with uh, uh, AMD is kind yeah. of a similar idea, right? I mean, it's all yep. in the same die, I guess, but um, the same idea. Well, by the way, it being on the same die makes it even more impressive when you think right, about it. Right. I mean, it's still um, a chip. It's just inside a case. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it's you know, it's that's that's a big deal. Yeah. No, I have a friend who uh, does uh, software for fabs for uh, uh, testing and automating for, yeah. uh, chip fabrication. He said the business is booming. Everybody is building chip fabs. It's it's like crazy. Uh, custom yeah. custom uh, silicon is all the rage. And it's easier than ever to do. Uh, yep. I think there's a lot of it going on. There's no way we're going to be enslaved by AI unless this happens. So, you know, <laughs> get moving, people. Yep. Yep. Uh, um, all right. Let's talk about... Did you see the... Pl- okay, just pardon me this one thing, Mary Jo. <laughs> Player okay. Unknown yeah. Battlegrounds, which is coming, as we know, to the Xbox. The the I, know, I, I did see this is uh, making a special... They want to get in the Chinese market. In order to do that, yes, they have to put socialist content yeah. in the game. I don't know what that this means. Is, Billboards <laughs> that say... This know. is actually just like what the previous conversation about the custom silicon, right? Um, if you're serious about doing business with China in this case, this is what you have to do. It's amazing. Um, 
yeah, there's a major censorship in China. It's obviously, obviously there are dictatorships around the world, but China's interesting because they have a dictatorship that allows a free economy to yeah, happen. I kind of <laughs> like their model, actually. <laughs> well, yeah, I've always been. I've been. Even we're probably when, heading toward it too. I, but. No, even uh, you know, I was a Chinese major in college, and one of the things I really found fascinating, of course, it was brutal, but was the way uh, the Chinese Communist Party and Mao Zedong had taken basically a feudal, primitive agrarian society and modernized it. And you see this still yeah. happening. Oh, at the speed which is unprecedented. Look, uh, they had an industrial revolution and an information revolution at the same time, practically. Yep. Yep. And no environmental consequences well. at all from that. <laughs> Alex Lindsay <laughs> so. is going to New Delhi uh, today, and uh, <laughs> you've seen the pictures of Delhi and the smog yeah. there. I mean, this is what happens if you're if you're trying mm -hmm. to industrialize quickly and mm -hmm. and uh, catch up as an underdeveloped nation. Then you know, mm -hmm. but at least to their credit, China's working really hard to fix that, and they are now uh, one of the fastest growing solar solar powers, if not the fastest growing solar. But, you know, on the tech end, uh, the big issue with China is the censorship thing, right? This yeah. is a, yeah. a an issue for all the big tech giants, for all the social networks. And apparently, it's an issue for uh, video game makers now, too. So, mm. I guess you could say only PUBG could go to China. Um, <laughs> but it's funny. Well, you, you, you see minor examples of this. You know, the, world, the Call of Duty game that just shipped, I think, does not feature any Nazi... Symbolism uh, in, in the German version right. of the game, right? This is well, who the hell are you sure. fighting? Yeah, it's, well, <laughs> it's World it's War. A, it's a it's a red empty flag, probably. Yeah. yeah. Wow, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So this is uh this is on a much bigger scale though, and uh, yeah, I I I, <laughs> I think a lot of people who live in the United States who are video gamers would love to see the Chinese version of this game. Just I think it'd probably be kind of fun. It'd be fun you to know. play it. Yeah. Yeah. And God knows we could use another level, so whatever it is, we'll take it. Um, and both Apple and uh, Microsoft, uh, and I imagine, well, Google doesn't really do business in China, I think, but, but certainly Microsoft and Apple are modifying their app stores to fit Chinese regulations. Apple's, they have to. Apple's I mean, pulling all the uh, VPN yeah. programs. Uh, Skype is gone, right? Yeah, the voiceover IP apps have all been silently removed from the store. But, wow. I, you know, I don't, I don't have an, any handle at all on what Skype usage or uh, messaging usage is in China. But I do know that China has China-specific apps and services for that stuff. And, um, you know, it's kind of like China is the one country on earth where Google isn't a big deal, right? Um, when you want to find something out there, you don't Google it. You, whatever it is, Weibo it or whatever it's called, whatever the service is. But, yeah. Um, Biden, yeah, so the, the impact Wipo. of this might yeah. ultimately be fairly minor, but I, I assume Skype and everyone else are going to try to um, update their apps to you can meet do the VoIP, needs of China. I, you know, over uh, uh, with a browser with WebRTC. So I wonder. I well, you wonder. know, Google has remember the the um, the Google Translate thing that will do yeah. fast translation. You can almost imagine China saying, "Look, we're, we're going to let you guys have voice over IP calls using Skype or whatever," but. If you uh, catch the person saying something that's anti-government, you have to bleep it out. Wow. <laughs> you know, wow. Or something like that, right? I mean, you can almost imagine that being the case. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. We're almost there. Mm -hmm. Now, if they had left Skype in China, would it be able to show ads? <laughs> and can I get the Chinese version without ads? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, a year. It was a year ago this week. I, uh, we, we, you, you might notice today's show is a little light on content. There's not a lot going on this past week. No. And um, Mary Jo and I were talking about this earlier today. And I went back. I said, well, you know, we must have run into the Thanksgiving <laughs> week thing before. What did this look like a year ago? And actually, if you go back to last year's show, it was chock full of stuff. There was all kinds huh. of stuff going on for some reason. Huh. Huh. But one of the articles I wrote that week was about the slippery slope of ads in Windows 10 or Windows it started off with Windows 8, remember? And I talked about how it's a slippery slope. And it once they get that stuff in there, it's going to get worse and worse. And it did, and it is. And um, yeah, now we have ads in Skype, you know. Um, a number of people have uh, pointed out to me privately and also publicly, like on Twitter, that uh, Microsoft is not alone in this kind of stuff. You know, if you go to Google Photos today on your phone or on the web, you're going to get a pop up ad for a special promotion they're having for printed books. Um, that's Google, you know, I, and whatever. I'm not, and I'm. I don't mean to suggest that uh, Microsoft's the only one doing this. I don't. I don't really care as much if Google does it. I. I think of them as not as a high class of an operation as it is. But <laughs> uh, well, no. I mean, 
in the same sense that I said earlier that Windows 10 was the, uh, you know, kind of the ultimate productivity tool and first rate, et cetera, et cetera, and Windows 10 S isn't, I mean, when you do stuff like this, to, to you know, it demeans, it cheapens the, the system. And um, whatever you think of Skype, and I certainly have my issues with Skype, um, this, this kind of, it just cheapens it. You know, it, it makes me want to go use something else. So the the thing you're objecting to is this new bot thing, right? There are these. Yeah, this is uh, actually Brad's story, by the way, but he showed yeah. this to me, and I was just like, oh man. Like, so there are some you know. new Skype bots that are <laughs> basically. <laughs> you have to have a Brad uh, showing here. Uh, yeah, it, that um, this one is for Saver Magazine, right? Isn't it? I don't really that, that remember. That lets some food let, lets like recipes come up. Um, it, but you have to choose to enable the bot, don't you? Uh, but it's an ad for the bot. <laughs> you know, it's like... Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, hey, here's a bot you might want to so enable. So you get the ad you know, without okay. the bot. Okay. Yeah. I guess this is another one we're far, far apart on, Paul, because I don't care about ads. I barely even see ads. Like, when I see that show up, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I, eh. And I, want it. I will say to you what I say to people on Twitter when I get feedback like that, which is that dictatorships rely on that form of acquiescence. So yeah. thank you. But Skype is an <laughs> ad-supported service. It is now. It always has been. Yeah. Okay. So I know. I. It's like <laughs> there are things that Microsoft does that they're free but ad-supported. That's one of them, right? Yeah, I uh, I felt this way about Outlook, and I, I paid for it as long as I could pay for yeah. it. I would pay for it in Skype. I would rather pay them some no. year, yeah. yearly fee or whatever. Um, yeah. I also think yeah. you could make a case that if I'm paying for Office 365, mm -hmm. there should be no ads in Skype. You know, I, Does Skype for Business have ads? No, Skype for Business probably doesn't. I'm, I'm no, referring right. to Office 365 yeah. Home or right. Personal. Home. No, yeah. I'm sure Skype for Business does Skype not have ads. Right. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. It's funny. I don't even see the ads in Skype anymore. Like I, I know they are there, but like I'm like, Jeez. do I ever even notice them? No. I want to, I I just, big problem just go, with I ads, want to go down right? a list of things that you don't notice. You yeah. don't notice the design stuff and the. I know. The I'm fluid, oblivious. Whatever. I see. You know what I see? Words. I see words. That's I'm like, right. I see the words. I read the words. <laughs> that's that's I, called literacy. That's, that's good. Oh. I know, and great. Leo's right. That's one of the reasons that ads don't work on the web anymore because right. people have become so them. immune to ads. Like, they yeah. just don't even see them. No. Either that or because of no script. No, I noticed, yeah. though, I noticed the banner ads. I just rarely see, you know, I'm looking at the content. I know there's an ad there, but I certainly don't yeah. know what it's oh, for. I, look, I just brought this up the other day. I find, I, I find ads to be maddening. So um, I pay, we pay for the New York Times. I read the New York Times in an app. Uh, I have many issues with the New York Times, but one of them is you're reading an article and there's an ad at the top and then you scroll yep. down and there's a hole in the story and you're like, oh, it's going to be a picture. <laughs> no, it's an ad. And yep. then you scroll down a little further. No, there's another ad. And those ads are often the same ad. They're just in there like five times. And it's yep. like, guys, seriously, I, you would be mocked endlessly if you put that on the web. And for some reason in their little app, this is perfectly okay. acceptable. You know, right. um, I, I just... That can't work. I, in fact, the only way it works is through misclicks. There are so many ads that you yeah. tap on them by mistake and I they run. Up. Yeah, that can be. That has to be the business model. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Ads are a broken business model for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's the yeah. other thing. They they they're certainly yeah. not paying either. It's not like. Yeah. Listen, if I could annoy the hell out of everybody and get paid a lot, that would be great. But yeah, right. what I get to do is annoy people and then not get paid at all, and that's kind of the worst of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It is. On that note, let's take a break. And the top of the. <laughs> the uh, it's my yeah. turn to annoy you. Uh, the top of the the back of the book is coming up, and I have, I have a pick. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. So we got beer. We got Mary Jo's enterprise pick. We got Paul's tips, and Leo. I've added got the, to the notes. Leo, you have. Uh, I have, you have editing capabilities. I've trusted yeah. you with this. Wow. Uh, I don't dare. <laughs> it's it's going to be a developer pick of the week. Wow. Oh, nice. Okay. 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 But first, nice. a word from Tracker. Holidays are here, 
And uh, I like it how they've customized this. Microsoft fans, find your lost keys quickly. <laughs> it works for everybody. You don't have to be a Microsoft fan. That's like, right. Wait, what? <laughs> the, the lower third says that. You lose things. You're a Microsoft fan. <laughs> you Microsoft fans are always losing your keys. Who isn't? It's human. It's called being human. And the tracker helps you find whatever it is. Not just keys, luggage, laptops, briefcases, purses, bicycles, pets. The tracker, I love the tracker, coin size tracking device that pairs with your smartphone using Bluetooth LE. So it's very, it's very uh, you know, economical in terms of power. This is the new tracker Pixel. Comes in beautiful colors. I have a black one. I'm boring as that. But you can get a green or red or you can get a multicolor pack. Right now there's some really good deals for the uh, Black Friday. And, of course, when you go to thetracker.com slash windows, you get 20% off. So stock up on the trackers. Get all kinds. This tracker Pixel is the smallest, lightest Bluetooth tracking device on the market. You pair it with your phone. You get two-way separation alerts. So if you leave the, let, let's say you attach the tracker to your keys, which is actually my use case. If I leave the keys somewhere, my phone goes, hey, don't go. As soon as I get 100 feet away, nope, stop. You left your keys and vice versa. The tracker pings me if I leave my phone behind. If I can't find my phone, there's a button on the tracker that sets off an alarm on the phone. And if I can't find my keys, I press a button on the tracker app on iOS or Android. And the tracker starts making noise. And this new tracker pixel has little LEDs in it that light up. And it's really makes, it's kind of makes quite a ruckus. And it makes it easy to find whatever you've left behind. But that's just the beginning because the tracker app also has a map. If you lose something, that device shows up on the map tracker says the last time i saw it was and then if somebody moves it this is the really cool thing you can turn on notifications in your tracker app that says when anybody else using the tracker app walks by my keys walks by my tracker pixel or bravo uh ping me let me know your keys were just seen in azerbaijan your keys were just seen in beijing your keys were and then you know let's hope it's somewhere closer to home you can go get them I just, I find this so useful, and I can't tell you how many times it saved my bacon. Even when I was wearing a Scotty vest, I've told this before, to, and, and I, I misplaced my keys in my, at one of the 27 pockets, and I thought I left them in a bar. I went to the bar. Nobody knew. I thought, oh, wait a minute. I forgot. I have the tracker on it. I'll press the button, and I hear the sound coming from inside. It's inside the coat. But that was awesome. That was really, it was, otherwise I would have just kind of been a mystery. There are 5 million trackers out there. That means there's nowhere you can go that there aren't tracker users keeping an eye on your stuff for you and you're keeping an eye on their stuff for them. It's the greatest crowd locate network. And of course, the 30-day money back guarantee means you have nothing to lose. And what a great gift for the holidays, a stocking stuffer uh, for yourself, for your family members. Hang them from the tree. How about that? A, a Christmas ornament? Put it in your wallet. Put them everywhere. Go to the thetracker.com, T-H-E-T-R-A-C-K-R.com, slash windows, 20% off right now. Stock up on trackers. You'll be very happy you did. Visit thetracker.com slash windows, thetracker.com slash windows. And we thank trackers so much uh, for their support of Windows Weekly. Let's kick things off with Mr. Paul Therott and his tip of the week. So, big holiday coming up this week. I'm referring, of course, to Black Friday. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and everyone's having a sale like of they course. do every year. Um, be sure you check out uh, the Microsoft Black Friday sale, especially if you're into Xbox, because there's some awesome savings. And if you want to buy games... Um, the digital game purchases are available now for Xbox Live Gold uh, subscribers. I actually just bought the new Wolfenstein uh, game, for example, uh, for thirty dollars, oh, uh, nice. normally sixty. Oh, that's nice. Um, but some of the games are sixty-seven percent off. I mean, you can get some big savings. So be sure you check out that list. But on the hardware side, I guess I have two things to consider. One is the Harman Kardon Invoke. This is the Cortana-powered speaker. Um, it's overly expensive normally at one ninety-nine. But over Black Friday, it's going to be $99. And I think at that point, it gets interesting. Um, yep, beautiful piece of hardware, gorgeous. And uh, the speaker quality is fantastic. Apparently, if so I go to the Microsoft store, they will mm -hmm. rebate me. For oh, what really? I really? Yeah. 
Oh, so if you bought one already, you might, you might oh, wow. consider doing it. Get that. your money back. Wow. Um, they gave me one, so I'll just go pick up 100 bucks. Why not? Why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just show up at the speaker. I have one of these. Can I have $100, yeah. please? Um, also, the Xbox One S uh, will be available for its lowest ever price of one hundred and eighty nine dollars. Um, undercutting I, the PlayStation Four by ten. Yeah, bucks. there's some nice choices there. That's so, nice. uh, if you cannot or do uh, can, cannot afford an X or don't want the Xbox One X, um, this is the value console of the season, no doubt about it. That's a fantastic price. Um, definitely check that out. But go check out the whole thing. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, I think I'm going to buy. This is Google, but Google is selling. Google and other retailers are selling a lot of their hardware uh, cheap. They have the new Google Home Mini, which I think is normally $60. It's going to be $30. Um, but you might want to check that stuff out, too, if you're into Google hardware. There's some stuff going on there as well. Um, and then for the app pick of the week, uh, Microsoft updated the Edge preview on Android to support password sync, right, which is one of those kind of obvious features. It's only in preview, so it's understandable that it's not feature complete yet. But... I'm actually starting to come around to the notion that Microsoft Edge on mobile makes tons of sense, um, especially if you use Edge on Windows 10, which I don't think makes tons of sense yet. But the thing that's interesting about it is it's not the browser, right? It's it's a shell on top of whatever the underlying browser is. And so you get a really clean interface. You get the integration with Edge on Windows. And you also get these cross-platform features uh, that enable you to pick up where you left off uh, on the Windows PC, which is can be useful. Um, on uh, sorry, on Android, what you're getting is Google Chrome, so you get that rendering engine, which is excellent. And on iOS, of course, you get Safari, which is also excellent. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You know, I really like the design of Edge, and I like the cross-platform stuff, and that stuff's all available. Uh, and then you get the better browser, you know, or the, or the browser that maybe makes more sense. I guess would be the way to say it under the covers. Um, I would at least take a look at it. There's no reason not to have multiple browsers on your phone, just like there's no reason to have, not to have, I should say, uh, multiple browsers on your PC. Um, and you should give it a look. It's it's improving basically at a weekly pace at this point. It's 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 starting to get really nice. Cool. Want to do a quick pick mm -hmm. for devs, and it's kind of up the alley of what you and Mary Jo uh, are talking about. The Microsoft uh, Windows Dev Center is offering uh, a limited time VM that includes everything you need to do uh, uh, apps, progressive web oh, apps. Uh, oh, really? Wow. Uh, well, actually, UWP. Never mind. Forget it. It's oh. UWP. But anyway, it's no, still free. It's, not, <laughs> it's okay. No. Uh, and it, so if you're running Linux or Macintosh, if you use VMware or Fusion, uh, VMware, uh, Fusion, Parallels, VirtualBox, or Hyper-V, you get the uh, Enterprise Evaluation uh, Edition of Windows 10. You get Visual Studio 2017 with UWP, Desktop, C++, and Azure workflows enabled. The Windows Developer SDK and Tools UWP samples, WSL is enabled. Paul, you'll be glad to hear that, and uh, mm -hmm. and all of that. And it's you just you don't. It expires uh, January fifteenth. But if you don't have anything else to do on the holidays, what's Brad doing there? Get out of there! Sorry. <laughs> uh, you don't have anything you else. You like to, to do program in your Kerber outfit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Windows Dev Center. It's a, it's a complete Windows ten development environment <laughs> for free. It's only a, you know obviously it's kind of just a, a come on. I wish they'd do this with PWA. I thought it was the first PWA. Yeah. It was UWP. You know, maybe they will once yep. they talk about PWAs. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Now, whatever, time, Whatever that's going to be. Whatever that is. Whatever that is. Right. Now, time for our Enterprise Pick of the Week. Um, yes. So, the Enterprise Pick of the Week has to do with hosting VMware on Azure, which sounds kind of weird when you first hear that. Um so Microsoft has um, some migration services for people who want to migrate their various cloud workloads to Azure. They have this thing called Azure Migrate. They have Azure Site Recovery. But now they've got in preview this brand new thing called, what's the official name? VMware Virtualization on Azure. This is for people who have certain workloads where it isn't really easy for them to directly migrate it to Azure. Uh, you can actually take the VMware stack and run it on Azure as kind of an intermediate step. 
And Microsoft is um, now putting this in preview. They're working with VMware's own partners to make it available. General availability is coming next year. And if you want to get in on the preview, they say, please contact your Microsoft sales rep and you'll be considered for the preview. So that's it's kind of interesting <laughs> to think about putting VMware on Azure. Hmm. But you hmm. can do it. You can do it. You can. you can do it. And your code name, pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley. Yes. So I don't know if this is a code name or the final name, but our buddy, the walking cat, found an app that is called Outings. Um, it's described as a personal travel guide from the Bing team. And uh, they, Microsoft has not announced this yet. Um, it looks like an app to help you discover new places that say you might want to go for vacation. I am not exactly sure why Microsoft is putting this app out. I'm guessing it might have something to do with HoloLens or maybe mixed reality at ah, some point. Interesting. Um, you know how we've said one of the big applications for these kinds of mixed reality devices could be travel and looking at yeah. places um, in a new way. So maybe this app is meant to kind of highlight that or show people how they could use mixed reality to travel. Uh, but we don't really know anything more about it yet. It's for iOS and Android, and we'll see when they announce it and how they position that. Outings. Hmm, interesting. Discover beautiful places. Google has an app called Trips that oh, do they? It okay. looks at where you're going ahead of time and kind of loads up interesting things yeah. to do and see where you're going. Yeah. And maybe proposes trips as well. I'm mm -hmm. guessing this is a moneymaker because they want a team with travel. You would think, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. Profit center. Yeah. Uh, and the beer pick of the week. Right. Why not a Rhode Island beer? Yay. I'm in Rhode Island. <laughs> it's wicked good. Narragansett. Wicked good. Narragansett. No, not that. I grew up not on that, that stuff. Beer, guys. <laughs> I was a kid. No, a better beer. A better beer. From a new, a relatively new brewery in Wakefield called Whaler's Brewing. Hmm. Um, since it's holiday time, how about a hazelnut cream oh, stout? Oh, boy. Boy, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So made with flaked oats, chocolate malt, and hazelnut coffee added at the end. The best part, only 6.5%. People always think stouts are heavier than IPAs and lighter colored beers. They're actually not, unless you are drinking an imperial stout. This one's very smooth. Think of it like a hazelnut coffee in beer form. Mm. That is what this is. Mm. And yeah, Whaler's Brewing Hazelnut Cream Stout. It's a good time of year to drink stouts. So here's a nice one. Sounds delish. And wow, this was uh, the short the Thanksgiving episode. Nice mm -hmm. short Thanksgiving. Are you having your first Thanksgiving in the uh, Emmaus uh, farmstead? <laughs> yeah, I yeah I think I don't know if I told the story before, but you know because we moved here this year, I said to my sisters, I'm like, look, I realize you guys have your own thing. I'm not trying to insert myself into it. And then five minutes later, everyone in my family was coming to my house Yay. for Thanksgiving. Of course they. So are. we have like 16 people coming here. So it was oh, wow. it was grandma's house before, right? Or yeah, actually it was. So yeah. that kind of makes some sense. And Did I you, think there, there was a river and, and a wood. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's all there. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> the horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. What fun. So you're going to have a big, big crowd. And how are you doing the turkey? Uh, we always brine it. Of course. We That's got a 23 a pound turkey this year. That's a given. It's roughly the size of a Volkswagen bug. <laughs> That's big. <laughs> I think it's actually an ostrich. I think who could tell, you know. Sounds delish. Is there a specialty you have, Paul, like something you do that's, you know. No, I, I actually the one thing I'll say is that um, this will be my first actual eating of like bread. Oh, yeah. In, the, in like a year. Like I'm going to oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to eat I'm going to eat the stuffing. Oh, like yeah. I, it's a holiday. You can and I'm going to get yeah. sick and then I'll probably never do it again. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How about you, yep. Mary Joe? You're at your sister's. I am. Yep. So, we're, we're having a um, small Thanksgiving, only 11 people this are you year. Are having a, uh, a, a, a turducken? What do you, you, what do you... Now, I, I usually make fish for myself at Thanksgiving, so I'm making swordfish. Oh, yum. Yep. That's the turkey of fish. It is. Actually, kind of, you right? could do it it's like firm. a Thanksgiving dinner. You could have some kind of stuffing with it, and all that the vegetables is. would apply. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah, yep. all the I sides have, are fine. Yeah. yeah. I have all the sides plus fish. It's yeah, perfect. The sides yeah, are actually there you go. great. Yeah. Um, yep. And we have uh, our pronouncer of the week, <laughs> a new a new feature uh, on the show. 
Uh, if, okay. You know, yeah, well, it's important that we learn how to pronounce the word. Let me turn it up here. Uh-oh. Turducken. Well. <laughs> Turdick McMurkin. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Merkin. All right, there you what? go. Well, you got to be able to speak English if you want to be in this country. Uh, wow. That's my uh, actually my favorite YouTube uh, channel. I can't help but just howl when I visit it. That's beautiful. YouTube.com slash pronunciation manual. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley join us. They grace us with their lovely presence and astute observations each and every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I should have put uh, Westerly, Westerly under your lower third there. I didn't, uh, okay. I forgot to change right. that there. Uh, okay. You'll find Mary Jo Foley. You don't have to go to Rhode Island. You just have to go to allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's her ZDNet blog. And uh, for Paul, well, that's simple. Therott. Dot com T H U R R O T T. His books are at leanpub.com. And uh, we love it if you come by 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 18, I'm sorry, 1900 UTC and watch the show live. If you do, please be in the chat room. Great bunch of people in there. Someday we will take a question from the chat room. <laughs> not today. Uh, <laughs> that day is not today. That day is not today. <laughs> no, Settle we down, lo- you We people. love it if you're in there. irc.twit.tv. Of course, on-demand audio and video is always available after the fact at twit.tv slash ww for this show and wherever you get your podcasts. YouTube, too. And I have to say, YouTube's back on the uh, Echo Show. If you have one of those screen-based Echoes, you know, you've always been able to ask any Echo uh, to listen to the show. You just say, Echo, listen to Windows Weekly. Sometimes you have to add on tune in because that's the radio service for uh, Amazon's Echo. You can say listen to Twit Live on tune in if you want to listen to the live show. And if you want to watch Windows Weekly, you can say Echo, watch Windows Weekly on YouTube. That's back. And you can see the latest episode of that and all of our other shows, which is nice. Thanks for being here. Enjoy your beer. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. You I will not be here next week. I'm going to be, oh, no. it's my birthday. I'll be celebrating in New oh, York City. Thanks. So Yay, Father nice. Robert will be uh, filling in. I think it's Father Robert will be filling in for me. Uh, that guy. That guy. <laughs> next Wednesday. Actually, will I? No, I'm going to be gone by then. Yeah. Okay. Because we're going to a show uh, Wednesday night in Manhattan. Nice. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. It's too bad you're in Westerly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're gonna. I'm gonna go see uh, the Broadway uh, opening of uh, Steve Martin's new show, Meteor Shower, and then the following night, Bette Midler in Hello Dolly, and that's my. Oh, Steve nice. Martin uh, figures prominently into our Thanksgiving tradition, thanks to really? planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, what do you do? Sleep with pillows? What do you do? I don't know. We well, watch the movie. Oh, you watch in other the words, movie. like we, nice. we we watch uh, Christmas Vacation on Christmas, and we oh, watch planes, fun. trains, and uh, yeah. Oh, it's a it's a Thanksgiving tradition. Mm-hmm. Also, Die Hard, by the way. <laughs> That's a Christmas show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a perfect Christmas yeah. movie. Uh, that, there's some dissension in the family about whether that one qualifies. But <laughs> all right, you guys have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you. Uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, but we'll be back here with Windows Weekly next Wednesday. Take care. Have a good trip. Thanks. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> exactly. How about them cups? Yeah.